Hi, I'm Jeff Teeter. I'm a systems engineer with the America Partners Organization. And today we're going to be reviewing Lab 9 of the Cisco Open SDN Controller Hands-On Lab. Specifically, we're going to be looking at working with Python scripting uh, with Open Daylight. Um, so, uh, by default, uh, the Open SDN Controller has IP tables enabled. Um, since we're going to be using um, the Mininet server, to launch the Python scripts, we do need to make some changes uh, to IP tables uh, just to allow that communication. So that's what we're going to go ahead and start with first. So uh, let me see if I have a connection here. It looks like we. Okay. And what we're going to do here. Um, is we're going to look at uh, the current listing of IP tables just to verify that uh, that it is on. I'm pretty sure it is. Okay, and it does look like there um, are a few things that are that are set up for it, but it doesn't look like um, what we need, which is port 8181, is open, which um, you know by default is the 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 port uh, for REST API uh, that's going to be used with Helium. Uh, so anyway, we're going to go ahead and and add that uh, to it. So let's. Uh, Go ahead and add a command to allow that. So IP tables uh, dash a input dash p tcp uh, dash s uh, one two two sixteen one dot one sixty, which is the IP address of the Mininet server that we're going to be using to actually launch um, the Python scripts and uh, the port is going to be that we're using is 8181 and we want to go ahead and accept that traffic Oops, I forgot. I need two dashes on uh, the destination port. Okay, so let's go ahead and and save it. Okay, it looks like it saved it. And then what we're going to go ahead and do is we're going to list it again and see if we have it. So it looks like uh, we should be allowed to go ahead and run Python scripts now uh, from Mininet. So that's a good thing. So we'll, we'll have to adjust, I think, the IP tables a, a couple times, but this is definitely one of those that you should be aware of it. Now, of course, you could always just turn IP tables off. Probably not a good security uh, methodology to use, but uh, I just wanted to demonstrate that you can easily update uh, IP tables. Let's go ahead and look at Mininet uh, real quick and look at some of the scripts. Um, So, let's see here. Okay, and the name of the script that we're going to be working with is OSC Show. Um,
and this is actually a script that has multiple different commands. There's actually uh, what is it, five different commands uh, that do different things, and we'll be using um, uh, different commands for different things. Um, let's see. Just taking a look here real quick. The output section. Let me go ahead and actually make a change here real quick. Let me go into Vi. Just so that you can see. couple different ways. Oops. Okay. Um, so basically I just changed the formatting and I'll, I'll show you um, what that is in just a second. Um, but on on for these particular uh, Python commands we're using Python 3.4 uh, we're using urlib. UR uh, basically, we're just sending uh, request statements. So it's very similar to what we've been doing with uh, Postman. But uh, in fact, what we're doing is we're, we're doing the same commands. We're just doing it uh, within Python. Um, so the first commands uh, look at network topology. Then we're going to be looking at the inventory nodes. Uh, then we're going to look at the link state tech, uh, topology. Uh, then we're going to look at um, uh, devices that are mounted, uh, config modules. Uh, we're going to look at some BGP information and IPv4 routes. Um, so let's go ahead and take a look and let's uh, try to run it and uh, see what happens. Okay. So it ran the first command, uh, but it's just a big glob of, of stuff. It's basically a big JSON dump, uh, which is really good if you're trying to get the information and, and basically have like another application kind of parse through that. So for example, if it's looking for uh, an IP address or something like that, it could be searching for IPv4 equals and then go ahead and get that value 101010 and then make a listing of all the IP addresses for example. Uh, but if you're wanting to just you know basically view it as a human a lot of times it's a little bit better to, to display it in a different format. And we can do that pretty simple. Uh, we can go back and uh, just edit the file real quick and we'll go to go down here instead of printing it printing out uh, the response string and what I'm doing is I'm going to insert mode and I'm basically commenting uh, the print response string and I'm uncommenting uh, basically a command that uh, uses JSON objects and then we're printing the JSON dumps and uh, basically what we're doing here is we're indenting it by four so let me go ahead and save that and then just run the command, the exact same command again, it's just formatted now a different, a little bit differently. And actually let me go ahead and do it with a more, there's a lot of information. So now you're getting the topology information and it's kind of formatted. Uh, so here's uh, router one information for uh, this node. Looks like this is information for node three, right? Here's information on node 4. And then we're getting some open flow information. Um, it looks like all the different open flows, right? So I'm not going to go through it in any uh, major detail, but basically it's just a ton of information. But you can get this in a much more readable format based on how you're wanting that information uh, to be sent out. So I'll just go ahead and scroll through that obviously a ton of information that we can gather about the network from just asking one particular device, the open SDN controller. So let's go ahead and go back and look um, 
and edit and look at the next command. Uh, so that was basically the first command uh, looking at the network topology. Now what we're going to do is going to insert mode and we're going to comment that out and uncomment the next command and then just save it um, with uh, WQ bang. And then what we're going to do is just run the next command by just running the program again. And basically what we're seeing here is uh, just what's uh, what is mounted to the controller. Now let's do something real real quick. Let's just go ahead and mount. Let's go back to Postman. Broken mount uh, router one uh, to the OpenSDN controller real quick. This it says it's done. Let's go ahead and run that command again and see what Python says. Okay. As you can see, it just mounted uh, router one. Let's go ahead and let's be a little bit creative here. Let's go ahead and do router three. So to do router three, we just have to remember there's just a couple parameters we need to change here. Just uh, the name of the router and then the address. Uh, the username and password's the same, so that's fine. So let's go ahead and send that. It says it did it. Let's go ahead and check Python. Go back here, just run the program again. And look, and it's it's uh, went ahead and, and mounted it. Uh, just for fun, let's go ahead and go back uh, actually to OpenSD controller here um, and see if any of those have gotten the APIs yet. So they've already went ahead and generated the APIs. So that NetConf Yang, that's pretty powerful stuff. Uh, so the APIs are actually still being loaded right now. Not all the documentation is ready, but it will be within just a second or two. And it looks like it is now. So you can actually go ahead and start doing some configurations and everything. But uh, just I wanted to loop that back. But let's go ahead and get back to the Python programming. So we've looked and now we can see uh, what devices are mounted to the OpenSDN controller. Uh, let's go ahead and go back and, and look at the next command. So again, we're going to go here, uh, we're going to go into insert mode, we're going to comment that command, and uncomment the other one, escape, do a WQ bang to save it, and we're just going to run the program again, see what we get. So here's a bunch of ISIS information, very similar uh, to, um, it's basically the same command as the link state topology. Uh, post command that we did uh, earlier in I believe oh I think that was probably lab 2 or lab 3 so basically the same information it's just that we can use a Python program to actually generate that information and then use other applications if we wanted to uh, to do something with that we could run, uh, do reports or we could be looking for uh, maybe a network change and then go ahead and, and do something else based on that network change. So lots, you know, really the only thing that, that limits you uh, with the OpenSDN controller and, and things like Python is really just your imagination. So let's go ahead and uh, uh, take a look at the next command here. And really all I'm, all I'm trying to do here is uh, really just demonstrate the power of Python with the OpenSDN controller, you know, with Open Daylight. Uh, so this one is uh, going to give us, uh, looks like the Yang models uh, that are on the OpenSDN controller, the different modules, I believe, features that are loaded. Uh, so let's take a look and see what it looks like. Yep. Didn't mean to run that one. Let's actually run the command. There we go. Okay, and here's giving you uh, all the different uh, modules that are loaded on the op OpenSDN controller. Um, so, uh, the piece up, uh, different topology, um, the BGP. So, a lot of different uh, Yang models that it's learned basically our paneler uh, BGP peer server so lots of different information X SQL 
Um, So just a, a ton of information scrolling through here. This could take a while, um, but that you know that's what the cool thing is with uh, the Open Daylight Controller is you can really gather a tremendous amount of data and then and then uh, make business decisions based on that. Uh, so let's go go ahead and go back to I think it's a, actually the last command. So we're going into insert mode. I'm just going to comment that and uh, and comment that and then escape and then just save the file and then we'll go ahead and run it real quick and so here we're getting BGP information we have IB, uh, IP version 4 addresses so here's uh, basically the, the router ID uh, here's prefix information um, that we're getting and again that's uh, here's router 3 and the prefix so uh, just basically a bunch of uh, IP addresses that are being generated via BGP. So very cool information. So um, just the you know the thing to to think about when you're working with the OpenSDN controller and network programmability in general uh, is there's just so many different ways to do the same thing. You just have to figure out the best way to do it. And definitely Python scripting is one of those ways to automate a lot of that. Uh, with the rest conf calls and, and gathering on all the power of the open SDN controller. Um, so on lab 10, I have one more lab left and what we'll be looking at is working with uh, XSQL which allows you to pull data uh, very much like you're pulling it from a database. So it's a pretty interesting, it's a short lab, but it's really uh, quite interesting uh, what you can do. Very different than using uh, rest conf to pull the data. Uh, so I'll be happy to take a look at that lab and that'll be coming up very shortly.